is Johnny Wrestling or Johnny Takeover, as my shirt says. And listen, I want you to listen. Like, we're involved right now. It's crazy. It's loud. It's hectic. We're in New York City. But I want you to listen to No Holds Barred Network. going ladies and gentlemen and welcome to episode number 13 of the next podcast right here on the no holds barred network your source for all wwe nxt uk wrestling and now aew and wwe retro wrestling coverage as well you can listen to us every week live here on spreaker download the free app and for all android and apple devices we are also available on youtube itunes and stitcher radio For all network updates, please go follow us on Twitter at NHB Network. And as well, follow the show on Twitter at The Next Podcast. I am your host, as always, the self-proclaimed greatest host of The Next Podcast and CEO of the No Holds Barred Network, Kyle Masters. And I'm always joined by my co-host. He is the host that runs the West Coast and now available in video form Michael Howie Hollywood, Michael Chow. What's going on, Michael? Uh, hello, M- M- Mr. Masters. I have I have your latte here. Hello. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, geez. Excuse me. Oh, Excuse me. Kyle, Kyle, put put some clothes on. Oh, I'll, I'll just take this drink outside. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. Guys, I'm so sorry for that, but you know we gotta get the ratings up on this podcast. So, Kyle, I'm sorry you had to shamefully take your clothes off and I had to shamefully walk in on you in the nude, but you know. Yeah, you know what? We we have to make this more edgier, right? We you know we got yes. we gotta we gotta turn the ratings up because mm-hmm. what what doesn't spike ratings like PG-13 edginess? Yeah, exactly. Yes. Almost seeing topless boobs. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's what men want to see nowadays. Not a bit of side boob. Yeah. Yeah, and if that Monday Night Raw stuff wasn't uh, to your liking, I will go ahead and give out a free hotel room key. I'll be wearing nothing but a towel. So someone, Ooh. please stop on by to SmackDown's edgier half-nudity mm, content. Nothing but a towel. Yes. You have to speak up. I'm wearing a towel. <laughs> <laughs> Quote from The Simpsons there. Anyways, what's going on, Michael? Uh, you know what? We had to do something for that intro. We had to, we had to spike ratings, right? <laughs> we got to spike those ratings, of course. <laughs> AEW's out. We gotta, we gotta, there's a lot of stuff to compete with here. Kyle, so oh god. Anyways, guys, welcome to episode thirteen of the next podcast titled "Up Up Next Phoenix." So we are going to be doing the predictions for uh, the Royal Rumble and NXT Takeover Phoenix. Uh, and if you are listening to us on the go live right now, we are live on Spreaker, Spreaker dot com slash nhbwp. Like I said before, it is free to download on all Android and Apple devices. You can make a profile and you can chat with all the live people in the chat right now. Let's head on over to that chat really quickly. We got Tiffany, the other co-host with me on the All uh, All Elite Wrestling Podcast now on the network. What's going on, Tiffany? We got Dottila. What is going on, Tiffany? A former co-host of this show michael he'll turn 21 brian is in the chat right now hey, uh, hey well, by the way what's going on here i hear there's this new retro show and all of a sudden they moved heel 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 brian to the alumni section like that what happened well you know brian, what, what? I, i'm just saying that uh they had a fresh start and, and you know brian basically was like the page of the group and you know they, oh. they, did, they didn't want to get rid of him but they got rid of him Mm-hmm. You know, I don't. I don't actually believe that at all. I secretly believe that heel turn twenty one Brian has secretly signed with the AEW podcast on the No Holds Bar Network. So well, I think he's already made the jump. Sorry, cannot guys. confirm. I'm going. That's all I'm going to say. No comment. I plead the fifth. Nope. That's it. Oh, all right. <laughs> we also got Brandy Lynn in the chat. What's going on, Brandy? 
What's going on? So how do all you people in the chat? Like I said before, guys, you can just make a free profile and chat with all the lovely people in the chat while we are live on the air. Talk some wrestling. Talk with us. We'll try to answer to the best as possible. Or if you're listening to us on iTunes, because we know a bulk of our listeners are on iTunes. What's going on to all our iTunes listeners out there and Stitcher Radio? Or if you went in over to our YouTube page, youtube.com slash NHBWR, and you obviously already hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, you're going to see the video version of this podcast which will be posted after our live show and you can see the uh, graphic I made I try my best I'm not a graphic designer you know I'm, I do my best out there so that's basically what I came up with you know we're not you're not you didn't come here to see the graphic you came here to hear our predictions so uh, I just tried to make it look a little bit visually appealing in some way and you got you, obviously me and down there Michael's beautiful faces on here uh, to <laughs> to see us here on the podcast and get, listen to us give our predictions uh, for the upcoming pay-per-views this weekend. Huge weekend in Phoenix this weekend, uh, which I'm going to. I'm flying uh, Friday Ooh. Friday morning. Um, God, it's been hell trying to get everything together. And, like, I don't know if anyone's ever traveled out there, but, like, you know, you, you get you, you, you think ahead of time, like, weeks before. You're like, ah, yeah, I'll be fine. I know what I'm going to be bringing. And then when you get up to it, you're like, shit. Like, you don't want to forget anything. Like, you're, like, thinking, like, last-minute things. Like, shit, okay, I can't forget this. I got to make sure this is there. I got to make sure I bring this. got to make sure I bring that. Um, something cool I actually just got in the mail. Thank God it came today, Michael. I ordered off Amazon. Thank God I have Amazon Prime. If you don't have Amazon Prime out there, I highly suggest you get Amazon Prime. This shit is legit. But anyways, I ordered myself a – it's not exactly a GoPro, but it's a GoPro. it's 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 not exactly a gopro but it's a gopro it does the same stuff it's just not you know i didn't pay eight hundred dollars for it ah (laughs) okay um i paid a decent price for it but i'm gonna be using that for my trip this weekend so i'm gonna be getting some footage and doing a uh, not a live blog but i will be doing a blog for the youtube channel for my trip this weekend Uh, me and no cell phil heading on over to uh phoenix the uh, rotating fifth of this, or working, sorry, third of this podcast. Um, Are you going to do a show while you're down there so Phil might actually make actually, an appearance on the show? Actually, speaking of Heel Turn 21, the <laughs> chat, he's actually going to be there. I want to plan to meet up with him. So oh. I'll hopefully get some footage of me and him rocking it somewhere, uh, just meeting up or whatever. So uh, Heel Turn 21, Brian, uh, you know, if you want to get in the, the vlog footage, let me know. If not, you know, I'll turn it off. It is you- what it is. I should do a show down there. You, Brian, Phil, and our newest co-host, Tiffany. It'd be good. We could. The Airbnb, me and Phil, got actually pretty tight. It's not bad. You know, it, it does. It's it's just a small apartment Airbnb. It's uh, it's a little bit. It's not that far away from where everything is because down in Phoenix, like where Chase Field is and Takasik Arena, they're literally right next to each other, and oh. everything is on the, the same street. So it works out that they have this like monorail street cart thing in the middle of the street that actually goes down that road and then it goes up another road and actually passes by our Airbnb. So it works out. It's like $4 for the day. So that's basically what we're going to be using to travel everywhere down there. Unless, you know, Brian wants to be our Uber driver, then, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> um, but uh, anyways, uh, Brandy has to go. See you later, Brandy. Uh, Brandy. Anyway, Brandy. But yeah, like I said, uh, a little bit of rambling here, but guys, we're here for the predictions for NXT uh, TakeOver uh, Phoenix and also Yay! the War Rumble. <laughs> Boo! Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we got got some stuff to talk about. Basically, guys, uh, as we always do in the prediction shows, we kind of recap the go-home shows from both uh, main roster and NXT um, or, you know, I can't really say that Triple H, is, Triple H wants to sway away from a main roster in NXT. So we're going to uh, recap this week's go-home shows from NXT and Raw and SmackDown. Um, we'll do NXT first, and then we'll do the predictions for TakeOver, and then we'll do the recap from the main roster, and then do the, the Royal Rumble predictions, and then uh, close off the show with some closing remarks and so on. Um, anyways, Girl 125 joining the chat. What's going on? Uh, let's jump right into it, Michael, and uh, recap uh, NXT from uh, this week, shall we? Sure. Sure, and that means the NXT chants are raining down upon us. You can hear them loud and proud, Michael. NXT, NXT. They're, they were loud this week. Uh, this was actually a pretty good taping of uh, NXT this week. Um, Go home show for the TakeOver Phoenix, and it was highlighted by a uh, face-to-face confrontation between uh, Gargano and uh, Ricochet. 
and I thought it was kind of weird because like NXT doesn't do face to face. They're not the brand to do these face to face things. That's like a main roster thing. That's like a Raw or SmackDown. They always do face to face. It's always like the last thing face to face, face to face before every pay per view. They literally had one on SmackDown. It was AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan face to face, but this time it was with Vince. Ooh, Ooh. Oh. oh, fresh start, fresh start, <laughs> fresh start. More Vince. <laughs> Anyways, oh um. So that was the highlight of the show, the big highlight. So we opened up NXT with Velveteen Dream. Uh, really good and hot start and fresh start, quote, uh, to start NXT this week for the go-home show. Uh, he gets in the ring. Huge uh, Velveteen chants from the NXT crowd. Uh, he's saying that uh, you might have noticed the Dream coming down with a little twinkle in his eye. And that's because he's got his eye set on gold. And he's got a specific goal, the North American Championship. So Velveteen Dream making a plea right now. He's heading for the North American Championship, which it's a little bit too late in my eyes. Just a little bit. Um, it's weird how this is happening all of a sudden, but you know what? They need something for him because really, what was he doing the last month? He really wasn't wasting. He was doing just. He wasn't really appearing on NXT. He was tweeting a bunch of stuff. He's been tweeting a bunch of stuff that's been controversial. I guess he's privatized his Twitter now. Which is uh, interesting as well. I don't know if he's unprivatized it since I've seen him privatize it, but uh, he's doing a lot of weird stuff. On uh, it's like it's almost like when he's not used and he's bored, he just he's always reacting on Twitter. So I don't know if that's part. I mean, it's kind of part of his character because he, he he sounds when he's tweeting. You can see that he's talking through his character, so he's always living his character. Now, what makes a great superstar? But then uh, at the same time, is he doing it on purpose because he's not being used because he's actually a really hot commodity and he should be used on a daily, on a weekly basis. So you really don't know exactly what his mindset is. You know, we can't really sit here and judge him. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, we opened up NXT this week with uh, him saying he's got his eyes on the North American Championship um, in 2019. And then Adam Cole and Bobby Fish cut him off. I knew it was going to be someone to cut him off because I could feel it that someone's going to cut him off and he, this is going to start a uh, number one contendership feud. Um, so Cole and Fish come out saying that 20, 2019 will continue to be the year of the undisputed. Uh, Velveteen chooses to dispute it after Bobby Fish ended Good the one. quote saying that was undisputed. Well, I choose to dispute it. <laughs> ah, clever. He's good. Uh, Basically, uh, he they attack the uh, they or fish and Cole attack Velveteen Dream in the ring. He get but uh, Velveteen gets the upper hand on Cole and flit on Fish, and he slips out of the ring and up the ramp, doing his pose and leaving Cole and Fish screaming like a bunch of angry old ladies in a Sunday grocery store. So they were <laughs> not not very happy. <laughs> um, so this was I think a pretty cool way to open up NXT to uh, preview what's in store for the future after TakeOver. Because, really, it's cool. I love how NXT does this. That kind of makes you, okay, so not everything on this show is just going to be about NXT TakeOver. We kind of want to see where it's going to be heading after NXT TakeOver. And I think NXT actually does a good job of doing that, a.k.a. the opening segment here. We know what the North American title picture is going to be like. Whoever wins it on Sunday, it's going towards Velveteen Dream and possibly Adam Cole or even Bobby Fish. Um it's really hard to tell who out of those two is going to be going for the championship because they their goal is to have everybody with a title belt. Mm-hmm. So uh, I was a little bit confused by this segment, uh, especially when he said he was going after the North American Championship because their Velveteen Dream and Adam Cole are technically, in a way, kind of part of NXT Takeover because. Both of them will be involved, and I'm very surprised that they haven't been advertising it. They're both part of the whole Worlds Collide tournament that's taking oh, place yeah. at the uh, NXT TakeOver Access show on Saturday. And they are, by the way, airing it on the WWE Network. So, you know, mm. of course, you're going, to be, you're going to be down there doing different stuff. But for fans who are not going to be in Phoenix, we can actually watch this tournament go down live at the uh, WWE mm-hmm. Access. Me and Phil and, might uh, actually head towards access, so we might yeah. want to just check it out for a bit. So we might actually get to see it live, and if you do, I'll, I'll try to you know do kind of this, wave my hands around, and hopefully be like, oh, Michael, did you see me, man? I was waving my hands around. <laughs> <laughs> know, or are you we'll the guy who got here. thrown out for wearing an <laughs> AEW shirt? There he goes. <laughs> yeah. 
So yeah, so once again, uh, we talked about last week when Kyle unfortunately thought that this was a uh, 2K tournament. But yeah, for those of you who don't know, there is a Worlds Collide tournament going down to WWE Access. My bad. Uh, no, that, that was on bad. me. That, that was, was on me. you. Our truth. Our, it's on you. But uh, it's a Worlds Collide tournament. It's combining all three brands. So it's NXT, NXT UK, and 205 Live. Five people from each brand, including Velveteen Dream and Adam Cole, are going to be on a Mm -hmm. one-on-one single elimination tournament whoever wins this gets a guaranteed title shot any title any brand within the brand uh, of those three so possibly Mm -hmm. velveteen dream could possibly challenge for the nxt uk championship or pete i don't think pete dunn's in there who's from there tyler bay if he wins he could possibly challenge for uh the cruiserweight championship so I don't know. Maybe Velveteen Dream could do you possibly think we'll see win. A cross, but do you think we'll see a cross champion? I mean, it's something to do and it's different. I, I expect something like that to come out of those three brands. But do we do we actually think it's going to happen? Like, do we think? I, it, ho- I hope so. Could it be? It'd be. Or are they using that tournament to? That's how they're going to start the whoever's getting the number one contendership for that North American Championship out of Cole and. Um, Velveteen Dream, either one of those two, whoever makes yep. it to the finals. So I doubt they. I don't think they can face. I, I haven't seen the tournament structure. I don't think they can face each other in the finals. So I imagine they'll be probably facing. It'll be a different brand versus a different brand in the finals. Mm-hmm. That makes um, sense. But yeah, great opening to NXT. This was followed up by a promo video for NXT Takeover for Shayna Baszler and Bianca Belair. I'm getting hyped for this freaking match, man. They did. Uh, they've been doing a good job and a better job of getting it more hyped. So I've enjoyed. This this promo it got me more a little bit more into it. I think the match is actually gonna be pretty good. It's gonna be really really. Then there's also that like oh there's that back in my head. I'm like I don't want Shafir and I don't want Duke to be appearing in this match at all. I want it to be one on one. And if they do, I hope they get thrown out from the referee catching them doing something sketchy. I just ah, I hate that I hate outside interference. It literally drives me absolutely bonkers. Me too. I, I, I I'm well, not a fan of that. But what are you gonna do? These these two these two goons suck. I mean, they lost their debut match. What are they gonna do? What are you gonna mm-hmm. do? So, yeah. Um, I got a question here in the live chat from Cupid Girl. Why can't the main roster be in this too? I want to see Breeze versus Dream or Ty versus Bait. Yeah, I mean, I don't understand why they couldn't have a couple of mid carders drop down and do this. But you know, because because they're so busy, right? This weekend. Because you're really going to utilize them, or you're going to give them a two second spot in a rumble. Oh, you know, Vince. Oh, this world collide sounds like a bad idea. Oh, I'm not going to send anyone down there. Oh, Tyler, stay where you are. You're not going down there anymore. Stay in catering. <laughs> um, anyways. Hi, uh, Hi Titus. <laughs> you don't slide anymore. Can't be sliding this one. I know you want to slide in the home plate here. You can't be doing that in this oh, Royal Rumble. Gosh. Titus is in the Royal Rumble. Gosh, he's sliding in. Hey, I dude, he's to... got you. It's in a baseball stadium where oh, sliding happens almost all the time in baseball. <laughs> you know he's going to be dressed as a baseball player, and he's going to slide. You know what that's going to happen. <laughs> I'm calling it right now. You guys, so, calling it. Someone has to come out with a bet. If no one comes out to Chase Field with a baseball bat, I don't care yeah, if it's Sting. Brooklyn Brawler coming out. In his in his ripped up Yankee uniform. But his name is Brooklyn Brawler. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, it could be. Well, they're not going to do a Memorial Battle Royal Mania. That's not unless he's in the Andre the Giant one. Uh, you know, a compromise is a very bad joke. But since they're in Phoenix, Beth Phoenix. Oh. Ah. <laughs> Mark ah. Chow joke of the week. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Uh, this is actually followed by a decent tag match. So we had uh, Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch versus Marcel Barthel and Fabian Eichner, who I'm actually uh, growing to love this tag team more and more. They're actually it's their chemistry. At first glance, you're like, who? What the fuck? Why are these two together? But then when you th- you watch them in a match, these guys just like feed off each other. They have excellent chemistry in the ring. It was a little sloppy at first, at the beginning of this match, and they picked it up. Uh, a lot of good spots back and forth. That crazy double rope moonsault by Fabian Eichner where he jumped from run rope to the other and into a backflip and for a guy of his size and it's crazy to say when I when I say a guy of his size because he this guy was in the cruiserweight classic like he just cut weight in the cruiserweight classic and I think he's gained a few pounds since then but for him to still do something like that 
looking like that, I mean, that's, you know, good on him. Uh, it just shows his athleticism is really uh, still intact. But that was a crazy spot, I thought. Um, lots of hard-hitting movesets from Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch. I love that from these two, that UK style of wrestling, uh, especially the Oni Lorcan adapting that style from Birch, probably Birch teaching him a few things here or there. Uh, lots of crazy spots, like I said. Oni Lorcan eventually got Marcel on a roll-up, and uh, Birch tr- or, uh, Eichner tried to save and break up the pin, but Birch was hanging on to him. And Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch got the victory here. I honestly thought there was, for the longest time, I thought that Marcel and Fabian were getting the pin here. But we get Larkin, or Lorcan and Birch with the victory, and I mean... What do you do with these guys? <laughs> like, what do you honestly do with these guys? What does that win mean? Like, are they getting another tag team title shot? Like, I feel like it's just they're wasting away with their talent, and they should be in the main title picture. Only Lorkin and Danny Birch are seriously underrated, I think, in the tag team division. Not to lo- not to say that a lot of people don't like them. I'm just saying that these guys are serious talent, and I think they deserve a lot more from what they're getting. I, I I totally agree with you, but I did not want them to win. I mean, uh, I wanted this new team to win because it's like, how are you how are you promoting these guys if you have them lose? So it's just Danny Birch and Oni Lurkin are incredible enough. They could have taken the loss here, even with a roll up. It's not that bad. And uh, we've been seeing a lot of tag team action, and I feel like just like last year, I feel like the Dusty Rhodes Classic is going to go down very soon. And once again, like last year, the finals are going to be at the uh, NXT TakeOver WrestleMania show. Okay, okay. Um, I hope they announce it soon. Mm-hmm. Need, I guess, well, they probably will announce it soon because they need something to fill for, what, January and March, or February and March. So they could do it in that time. Uh, we had an Alistair Black, Tommaso Ciampa promo, another decent promo, I thought. Um, and then we get, uh, this is an interesting part of NXT this week. Uh, we had Io Shirai and Kari Zayn teaming up in a women's tag team match uh, against some lo- enhancement talents, if you will. We have uh, Tanea Brooks and Amber Nova. Ooh, man, oh, man. Miss Nova. Woo. <laughs> Spots and over there. <laughs> Ooh man, I don't know if these guys were actually anything in indies or are they just developmental people, like trainers. But <laughs> oh man, would they ever look off? <laughs> they, I'm like, they are not a. Tag it was team. bad. What is, it was bad. What is this? So, I guess you can say it was a decent showcase match. Obviously, the showcase Eero and Kari Zane's chemistry together. Uh, love Io Shirai. She is so quick and so athletic, man. She brings such. A different style of move set to the women's division that's amazing. Um, uh, maybe I'm guessing they're showcasing for the tag team titles for the main roster because these two as a tag team in NXT are not going to do anything. Like you're you, what you're gonna just a tag team match all what it's gonna lead to. So obviously this is just a showcase until they get that whole tag team thing going on the main roster. That way when that gets going they're gonna call up these two um, and probably with uh, I'll get you in a second. So, uh, interesting finisher that these two have. It kind, it, it kind of, they kind of complement each other into this finisher. It's a very, very long finisher, but uh, Io Shirai helps uh, Kari Zayn do like a mini miniature version of her elbow drop, and then she helps uh, Io Shirai do a miniature version of her moon salt. So they do that one after the other, and then uh, Kari Zayn goes for the pin after. So it's an interesting way to do a finisher. I mean, it's it's long, but you know, it's something, right? Uh, it's interesting. You know, they can improvise, but something to test out. It's all right for now. Um, so I, like I, thought that was, I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, I imagine that uh, Duke and Shafir will get involved soon. And speak of the devil, we come right back from commercial break. I literally was, when I type this out, I'm like, for sure, Duke and Shafir will eventually get involved. We come back from commercial. What happens? Io Shirai and Kari Zayn are in the backstage interview, and who interrupts them? Duke and Shafir. <laughs> <laughs> and they have a stare down. Then it gets Ooh. announced later on in the night that they're facing each other in the NXT tape match at Phoenix. They, uh, in a way, this is kind of a rematch. But then, in that case, I have some unfortunate news because uh, Jessamine Duke and Morena Shafir actually faced Io Shirai. But last time it was with Dakota Kai, mm, right. and there is some sad news going down that Dakota Kai did yeah. actually pull out her ACL. 
mm-hmm. and she's going to be out. If, it's, if, it's, if this is the same type of injury that Triple H suffered, then she's going to be out for pretty much a year. And it really sucks because one of her best friends, Tegan Knox from the Mae Young Classic, suffered – what was it? It was in a knee injury, or did she also pull her ACL too? Because, man, this is crazy that both yeah, girls I think, would... was, I think it was the second part. But anyways, like just Dakota Kai with that injury, I seen her today post a day one – uh, recovery program like she's doing the with the therapy bands like training her leg and you can see the scar in her knee it's just like sucks what a time to go down for injury so mm-hmm. but Io Shirai and Kari Zane I think eventually we're going to be a tag team regardless um, I don't know if they had any plans for Io Shirai or Kari Zane going forward in the singles division but I like these two as a tag team if they're going to get that whole women's tag team title thing going in the main roster and get that bump in so um, all power to them and I, I guarantee they'll be called up as soon as that division gets going. So uh, until then, they're probably just going to get a bunch of showcase match. Obviously, a feud like this against Shafir and Duke, which is already starting. We're going to get the match already next week. Um, so, yeah, I uh, can't wait for that. Uh, come back from the commercial break. We had Dream versus Fish. And uh, uh, I guess it was labeled the main event, even though it wasn't. Uh, but it was the main event match, I guess. Uh, this is actually a pretty decent match, and I think it's because we're not getting anything out of Dream, so he kind of put everything into this match for takeover because we're not getting him in a match takeover, so he's putting a lot into this match. Um, I thought this was really, really well done. Uh, Cole was out at ringside for this match, and again, like I said, I fucking hate when there's interference at ringside, <laughs> so you know that he's going to play a factor into this match. Dream had to strategize basically on the go. Uh, eventually Cole and Fish got the dream to take out uh, his leg, and uh, Bobby Fish eventually took control of the match at that point. Dream regained a little bit of momentum. Uh, there was a spot where Fish reversed the Dream Maker into a leg lock, and he looked like, man, the it looked like like Velveteen Dream got shot. Like, when he, when he locked <laughs> in that leg bar, he was... He was selling it so good, like as if his leg was being literally yanked off his like socket. Like he was selling it great, and even Cole like grabbing the rope and pulling it back. Referee catches him, starts arguing, bickering back and forth. Uh, eventually, the Dream hits the Dream Valley driver on Fish. Quickly runs up the turnbuckle. Radically, his legs all right for a quick second. He jumps up from the deck <laughs> and gets up to that turnbuckle, and literally, I think like two seconds flat. Get delivers the uh, the elbow drop for the win and a uh, good match. It's a pretty cool match between uh, Bobby Fish and Velveteen Dream, especially because I didn't think Bobby Fish was still ready to go, especially because fuck everything is wrapped up his boat. Like did you see when he first came out mm-hmm. in that promo in the beginning of the show, he had his brace on, but then on the other ankle he had some kind of big, look like a giant ice pack taped to his ankle. I'm like, man, does this guy like have brittle legs? What's going on with his legs here, man? I was like, what's going on? Uh, no comment. I would have to say that's undisputed. <laughs> I'm disputing it. <laughs> Just saying. Um, anyways, uh, yeah. So this was a decent match. I thought it was pretty good. Pretty it's good. good. Uh, they announced for next week that Street Profits and the Forgotten Sons are going to be facing each other off in a tag team match from what happened last week. And obviously the one I just talked about, sure. Uh, Io Shirai and Kari Zayn versus Duke and Shafir. This is all happening uh, pre-takeover in Phoenix, so I'm going to be sure to catch those matches live. I'm going to have to get to the arena early for that to catch those. I really want to watch those two matches, so uh, I'll be sure to watch those live, and I actually can't wait to watch those live. Um, so we get to the actual real main event, and that's Gargano and Ricochet face to face. This was sick. This was interesting. If you didn't watch this, guys, go back and watch this. This they had an insane end of match or end of uh, end of NXT segment this week. Very, very interesting. So um, Ricochet comes out first, uh, talks about Gargano saying he's not a coward anymore, but then talks about saying, "Well, he's the guy who super kicked me in the face last week, just like a coward." Says uh, John, twenty nineteen has shown Johnny his true colors. And Ricochet says in 2018 he showed his by winning the North American Championship. Um, he showed the NXT Universe something Johnny is not, and that is a champion. Uh, so taking a shot at Johnny Gargano for not having any gold. Gargano comes out and says that 2018, 
he if this was 2018, he'd charge to the ring. But this is 2019, and he always has a plan B. But charges the ring anyways, attacks him. Ricochet throws Gargano <laughs> out. And so it is. Tw- it is. Tw- it is 2018. All I right, guess. Then. <laughs> and then uh, out of nowhere, Champa comes from behind Ricochet and attacks him. And I'm like, oh shit! Like, oh damn! So I, I'm going nuts over that. And he throws Ricochet out in front of Gargano, and then he just like they 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 kind they they're doing this all this segment. They they give this stare at each other like. Like, what's going on here? Like, oh, I remember you. And, like, you know, there's, like, weird, like, like, should we do it? Should we not do it? Stairs. Um, so then Gargano jumps on Ricochet. And then Aleister Black comes down. He starts attacking Tommaso Ciampa. And then eventually uh, Johnny Gargano sees that and then gets into the ring and starts attacking Aleister Black. And it super kicks him in the face. And then it's basically the role reversal. Ciampa sees that, and they both look at each other. And he jumps on Aleister Black. And then Ricochet gets in the ring, and they're both attacking each other's opponents. And it's just like the crowd's chanting DIY. Like, oh, at least like 80% of them, there's the 20% that don't want it to happen. And it's just, just an insane segment here. Um, and then, uh, they leave them lying in the ring. And then as they're leaving, they both leave out in the opposite sides of the ring. They meet up on the ramp, and they're just... <laughs> Doing this awkward staring, not saying anything stuff going up the ramp, and they're finally at the top of the ramp. They're staring at each other, and then Ciampa extends his hand, and then Gargano's looking at it, and it looks like we're about to see like the reformation of DIY, and then out comes the savior. Ah. Candice LeRae, out to save the day, gets in Johnny's face, like, no, you're not that guy anymore. Don't do it. Don't shake his hand. You're past that. And like you can see, if you look at Johnny's face, it like clicks in right away. Like He's like, oh. Like, he just got out of a trance. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm not him anymore. Yeah, yeah, screw that. No, no, no. Let's go. Let's go. Like, I'm not him. And then you look at – they put the camera on Ciampa, and he does the same thing. He's holding his title, and then he snaps to it and goes, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, Goldie, Goldie, like Goldie. So, wow. <laughs> wow. That, this... that, totally, that totally remind me of, you know, that one friend who's always having problems with their boyfriend or girlfriend. And whenever they break up, you're trying to convince them, don't get back with your boyfriend or girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. You know how bad that relationship is. And you're trying to stop them. Don't mm-hmm. get back together with them. But you know, in the end, oh, yeah. that this troublesome couple is going to get back together again. So we will see. Oh, God, man, that was just, that was intense. That was some intense, <laughs> uh, Awkward staring, I guess, back and forth between these two. And, um, man, that was just, oh. man, this is the best storyline ever. This storyline has been going on for two and a half years, almost three years this storyline has been going on for. And it hasn't come to a full end yet. The full end has to end with these two in a Hell in a Cell match. Like, that. It's it's you don't even have to sit there and create new ideas for it. That's just how the ending has to come. That, that's got to be the end result. It's just building towards it and how you want to end it and how long you want to do it. You know what? It, it might even now be NXT TakeOver Chicago 3 be the end one, like where it all started again. And that would probably end it, right? Mm-hmm. And that's why I, I honestly hope that they these two do not get back together because to have this two-and-a-half-year feud and then have it end with them being friends again, yeah. it, it's not the conclusion that I want. Mm-hmm. I definitely do not want them to reform DIY. Mm-hmm. If they have to and they want these two to kind of form an alliance, that's fine, but I do not want them to be like a tag team again. I don't mm-hmm. want a DIY reunion. If you have to and you have to form some type of alliance, like when Stone Cold teamed up with Triple H, the yeah. two-man power trip, then okay if we have to, but... Don't bring back DIY. Yeah. Don't do it. I, I, I can't see it. As much as I wanted it to happen, I just like, no. It can't happen. It's not. It, it shouldn't happen, and it won't happen, basically, bottom line. Um, so Ken- that was a – Kenneth Lurie coming out here is basically most of the fans. You're like, you, kn- you know you hate him. You know yeah. why this feud started. Don't do it. Kenneth Lurie represents the fans. Don't do it, Johnny. Yeah. Say no You're to drugs, good Johnny. Say no to drugs. Say no to good <laughs> drugs, Johnny. Yeah. You're the so, official mascot of this podcast. Don't do it, Johnny. All right, don't do it. <laughs> anyway, so that was a good uh, go home show. I thought it was pretty decent. Yeah. Um, although we didn't really get much build for the tag teams, and we kind of most morally got that last week. Um, we would like to see at least a little something between them, maybe like a quick 
thirty second in the parking lot. They're just beating the shit out of each other for no reason, kind of thing. Uh, just you know, starting to heat things up. But uh, you know, from what we got, that was pretty okay. Maybe not the greatest, but it was okay. So uh, now, in talking about this, let's get to it. NXT Takeover Phoenix. Woo! That, that logo is very Randy Orton esque with the Viper fangs and. <laughs> Yeah, Randy Orton helped create this logo. What's going on there? Um, so we'll do our predictions for this. And uh, me and Michael were talking before the show. We're like, we don't remember who won the last time we did this. And we, we have to keep track of this. But we think we tied. So we're mutually at an 80% thinking we tied. We'll have to go back and see. But uh, for now, we'll keep it as a tie. So uh, we'll see who wins this weekend. And we'll have to bring it up for next show. we got to remember. I got, we got to bring this up next show and see who won this weekend. But uh, we'll get into our predictions. There is five confirmed matches uh, for the show. One was actually s- semi-confirmed already on NXT this week, even though it was already on Wikipedia. But that was Matt Riddle uh, versus Cassius Ono. Um, we have Ricochet versus Johnny Gargano. The Undisputed Air, Kyle O'Reilly, Roger Strong versus War Raiders for the NXT Tag Team Championship. Uh, Gargano and Ricochet for the NXT North American Baszler versus Bianca Belair for the women's title and Ciampa Black for the NXT championship. And then obviously the two other matches for the NXT taping. So in a way, seven total matches, five confirmed for the pay-per-view. We're not going to discuss the NXT matches. Um, so we'll just jump uh, right into the card, Michael, and we'll start with uh, Matt Riddle and Cassius. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh yes. Meh. Meh. I'm, a, like a, I'm a meh for this. Yeah, it's cool. We're finally going to see Matt Riddle. I guess he's uh, quote-unquote medically cleared now. That was all storyline, people. Let's not buy all into this. Matt Riddle uh, is as injured as John Cena. So just to throw <laughs> oh, this out there. We'll t- we're going to people, talk about that later, are, by the way. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. Because a lot of people are st- actually thinking that Cena's injured and wondering about his injury. Mm. Let's... Mm-mm. No, no, no. Anyways, um, so Matt Riddle coming back from uh, quote unquote injury, facing Cassius Ono, the guy who put him there on the shelf. And uh, I mean, we saw what happened last week with uh, Matt Riddle, or with uh, sorry, Cassius Ono and Keith Lee, uh, in his big cheat win, and then uh, Ka- uh, Matt Riddle coming out to try to attack Cassius Ono, but getting held up back by uh, NXT officials. You know what? I don't know. I mean, we already had this match at the last takeover, did we not? I was in the pre-show. Okay, oh wait, no, was... no, wait, no. It was on the card, but it was like what two seconds? Yeah, yeah. So, so my guess is we're going to get anywhere between. I can't say we're going to get a long match out of these two. For some reason, I feel like they're still holding Riddle off for a better opponent, and Ono is like a just for now opponent. I'd say it's no longer than five to six minutes long. This match. Maybe they'll just do it short again. Like, I can't, I, I can't get invested in this match too much because I don't think it's going to be that long. But the end result, because I know how high they are, I'm going to take the biased way out of here. And I know that how high they are in Matt Riddle. I can't see Cash Zone opening a fast one on Matt Riddle, even though I could say maybe because they've made Keith Lee into a losing stock for whatever reason. Ugh. I think they have more faith in Matt Riddle in my eyes. So I'm picking Matt Riddle. Uh, via ch- submission move, whatever his finisher is called, the bro lock. I don't know what he wants to call it. Um, but uh, bro Matt mission. Riddle. Bro mission. Uh, but Matt Riddle for the win here via mm-hmm. submission. Yep. I'm agreeing with you. I want Matt Riddle to win because if Cash Zono wins, uh, this rival will just continue, and I do not want that. Uh, because the last match they had was just a couple of seconds, I feel like this match is going to go for a while. It's definitely going to be longer than a Brock Lesnar match. So <laughs> I have uh, you think Matt so? Riddle winning. Yeah, yes, yes. Are you kidding me? I just uh, oh, I can't see it being long at all. Like especially well, with Bar- a guy guy like Cassius Ono, he's he's not really in the the type of shape to go that long anymore. And I haven't seen him have a long match in a long time. Yeah, but bear in mind, remember, there are only five matches on the card. They do have to fill up those hours unless one match wants to go for a long, long time. Um, I would say it's going to go as long as maybe a TV match would go. I'm not saying it has to go like long, long, like 20 yeah. minutes, but maybe as long as a, just a regular NXT TV taping match would go. I agree with you. It's going to be with the uh, 
Or you know what? Instead of the bro mission, I'm gonna go with some type of kick because you know how uh, Cassizono is known as the knockout artist. I yeah. would like to see uh, Matt Riddle with his background in UFC, just plain knockout Cassizono with okay. some type of kick and take the cover. And there you go. Okay. So I have Matt um, Riddle in it. So maybe we maybe should have had Adam versus Velveteen Dream here mm, and pushed. Well, and push this to the NXT card. Yes, but remember, they are technically involved in that Worlds Collide oh, yeah, tournament. So true. they might possibly actually face each other in the tournament. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, but I totally That's agree. Right. This would have been good for them to face off. Or maybe Riddle and Ono should have been in that tournament. <laughs> that is true. Uh, yes. Anyway, so move on to the next match here. And oof, it's tough. Um, yeah, we'll talk about it anyways. We'll do it in order here. So Ricochet versus Johnny Gargano uh, for the NXT North American Championship match. I am looking forward to this match. Can't believe I get to see this match live. Um, this is gonna. I'm gonna go ape shit for this match. I will definitely mark out for this match. Um, just the the the. What am I trying to say? The move sets of both these guys colliding into one match is going to be beyond exceptional these guys are going to put it all on the line this could be one of matches of the night for sure you, you've seen what a ricochet can do in the ring you've seen what a johnny gargano can do in a ring putting these guys together for a championship match is most likely going to be going anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes long um these guys are going to put it all on the line and this one's a tough one this one's very tough because i can't see what the future is going because because of what's been happening i can't see what the future is going to be from here until WrestleMania, which is a good thing. Um, I want to say it's probably going to be Gargano and Ciampa again for the NXT title, but I don't think it's going to happen like that. As much as everyone wants it to happen at that NXT WrestleMania, I don't think it's going to happen. Um, so, this one's going to be a very, very interesting pick here. Um, but uh, I'm picking uh, Johnny Gargano to win the North American Championship here. So this is uh this is going to be very 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 tight near fall and maybe even a cheap victory a heelish victory out of Johnny Gargano and that's going to set up Gargano and Velveteen Dream for the North American Championship for NXT uh, Brooklyn WrestleMania time so that's what I'm going with I'm sticking with that pick uh, but I'm looking forward to this match it, it's going to be insane um, you just think of these guys like you you put your these people out there are just like, oh, NXT is for a niche audience and it's for the indie marks and blah, 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 blah. Put that aside. These guys are both ex- extremely unreal competitors with extreme athleticism. Putting those into the ring together. Wow. Take my goddamn money now. So I can't wait for it. Gargano, I'm picking for the North American Championship win here uh, against Ricochet. Against my boy mm-hmm. Ricochet. And I'm a Ricochet fan too. So There you go. And yeah, I'm gonna agree with you. I'm gonna go with Johnny Gargano as well. Hashtag and new. Ooh. So uh, for me, it's it's Johnny Gargano. He's you know it's tough. Is he heel or is he not heel? We think he's heel. He comes out. He shakes the hands of the fans. So what is he? But let's just say for the sake of it that Johnny Gargano is heel. He has been losing matches. So I need Johnny Gargano to really push him into the, the push that he needs into this whole heel turn. He right. needs this title. He really does. Ricochet, he's lost before. I think it'd be okay for him to lose here. And I feel like uh, with what they've been hinting at on TV, I feel like Tommaso Ciampa is going to help him win this title. So uh, whether it's a distraction or he comes down here and Ricochet hits him, he turns around into whatever Jar- Gargano does after that. I feel Gargano's going to win with an assistance from Tommaso Ciampa. More on that later on. Mm-hmm. I have Johnny Gargano. I'm with you walking out as the new North American champions. Okay. So let's move on to the tag team match for the NXT Tag Team Championships. We got the Undisputed Era in Kyle O'Reilly. Roderick Strong versus the War Raiders, Hanson and Rowe. I mean, they've had time to build. We saw what happened last week, too, and the weeks beforehand with these guys. Um, it's it's being played out to be a very, very physical and intense matchup between these two. Very, very brutal all-out war between both of them, you know, pun intended, because the War Raiders. Um, <laughs> I just, I, it's tough 
to actually be thinking of which way the title's going to go. For some reason, I can only see one direction. And I'm already going to state my case. Undisputed Era is coming out with the titles here. Cannot see the War Raiders coming out with the, the NXT Championship here. I feel like they're going to be, to me, I just feel like they're going to be a team that comes close to the NXT Championship but are not going to win it at all before they get called up. Uh, they're just they, to me they seem like that team as much as they're amazing like Hanson is really really athletic and beastly for a guy his size so uh, as putting that aside I nothing against the War Raiders I can't see them winning the championship gold here Undisputed Era is going to have another big year in 2019 they're going to keep riding that momentum like they said in Bobby Fish's promo uh, they're going to keep this is still the era of the Undisputed and uh, Roderick Strong and Kyle O'Reilly will find a way to defeat the War Raiders, and it's set to be probably this probably won't be. I've been told, Michael, by people that are thinking this might be match of the night, mm-hmm. this tag team match, because I can see that Roderick Strong and Kyle O'Reilly have had insane chemistry together. These guys in, in in all their tag team matches together have been insane, and both are really really great wrestlers too. Both with sick move sets, athletic athleticism, top notch. So going against Hanson and Rowe, who have uh, history and experience with wrestling these types of people from New Japan, this is set to be a really, really good tag team match. But fortunately, I cannot see the War Raiders going out on top here. So I'm picking the Undisputed Era to retain the NXT Tag Team Championships. Mm-hmm. You know, I had here on my notes the Undisputed Era winning, but since you and me have been tying on the same prediction, Hey, no, you I'm can gonna... stay with it. You can stay no, with it. No, you know what? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to switch over. I'm going to go with War Raiders. So I have War Raiders. Okay. I'm now switching over because here's the thing. On this era, they've been winning way too much. There was only that one time that they lost. Uh, only that. Went... Yeah, but I mean, I f- <laughs> well, I feel like they shamefully had what was a Mustache Mountain win only because they were in the UK. If it was not in the UK event, I don't – I would have not – Mustache Mountain would not have beaten uh, Undisputed Era. So. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go with War Raiders with Undisputed Era pick, regaining the title somewhere down the line. Uh, once again, they have the Dusty Rhodes Classic. They can also push the fact, will the Undisputed Era repeat as Dusty Rhodes Classic champions? We'll have to wait and see, but I need something fresh. So, because when you really think about it, Undisputed Era, right? Once they beat War Raiders, who do they go, who, who do they face after this? You know what I mean? It's... Yeah. At least with War Raiders, you could have different options. They can go up against, what, Forgotten Sons? They could go up against maybe, you know, another team. We need my boys team. Street Profits versus Undisputed Era. We've never had that yet for the tag team titles. That's going to happen. Mark my words, Street Profits versus Undisputed Era is going to happen. And I have a feeling it's going to happen at NXT WrestleMania. The Street Profits are finally going to get their chance at a title. Whether they win it or not, they're finally going to get their chance at that championship. And it's going to happen at NXT Brooklyn WrestleMania. That's what I'm going with. But well, it, actually, you know, you know what? We're all entitled to our opinions. You mean you, you know, War Raiders are right? Yeah, yeah, already, you know, you it's know, good know big. Yeah. yeah, but you know, I, I would actually disagree with you because I feel like it's not going to be NXT Takeover WrestleMania because the Undisputed Era is going to face the Street Profits at Evolve. There we go, champs oh. versus champs. Kidding? Not going to happen. They barely even mention the fact that Street Profits are the Evolve Tag Team Champions. Right. So, which is weird because yeah. both brands like they're together, like they. They have a they have a partnership, but they won't ever mention Evolve Championships on NXT. Yeah. But they mention NXT shit on Evolve, which is a little weird. Anyways, um, you know you know it would be really great uh, because the ladder match uh, last year during NXT Takeover New Orleans was probably my favorite match of the night. I would not be surprised if they had the uh, if they had like a multi-person ladder match for the tag team championship at NXT Takeover WrestleMania, that'd be oh. the greatest. You had do for the Era. tag team titles instead of the North yeah. American one this time. Yeah, yeah, I can yeah. see that. So do it, uh, Undisputed Era, or whoever's champs defending against War Raiders, Street Profits, Oni Larkin, Danny Birch, Fatal Four Way ladder match, match of the night. Okay, so. I like that. I like that. All right, so we'll move on here to uh, the Women's Championship uh, for NXT, and that's Shayna Baszler versus the undefeated Bianca Belair. Huge championship match here for that Women's Championship. You have a girl who's undefeated still in NXT for over a year. You have Shayna Baszler, who's literally been the most dominant Women's Champion since Asuka in this brand. 
and literally uh, gaining more momentum as probably being one of the more dominant champions, regardless of the undisputed streak. You put that aside, Shannon Baszler is just tearing house right now, and she's it, literally a beast, like literally a beast. She's the place a perfect bully character, the perfect badass character. She's the Samoa Joe of NXT Women's Division, literally, and she's just she plays her character so well, and it's just it's. A, She's been doing so good, basically. Bottom line, she's been running house on NXT's women's division, and now she's got her literally her probably her biggest test since becoming women's champion against Bianca Belair because she can't take Bianca Belair lightly here, man. She's Bianca Belair is strong, and mm-hmm. it was said in the promo video if you caught it uh, right at the end. Shane Bates was like, "I don't care how fast you are, I don't care how strong you are, everyone breathes," and basically saying that. You know, I'm going to be cutting your breath. And that's how the women are going to beat you is by choking you out. So it's going to be very interesting how this match goes down and the dynamic of this match and how they're going to uh, make each other look good, how the, how who's going to come out on top, who's going to gain more of the momentum. But like I said, if the fucking horsewomen are at ringside again, I'm... It's going to literally piss me off more than anything else, Michael. I just I can't stand when there's outside interference. Like I said, the only way I'm going to like this is if they are if they're there, they get thrown out at some point early in the match by the referee and we get a true one-on-one match between Baszler and Bianca Belair. I think we deserve something like that, especially from the work both these two have been putting in. I think we deserve a fair, clean one-on-one match between those two ultimate two ultimate egos big-headed, tough girls going at it for this NXT Women's Championship. So I've done, I think they've done a good job building it. The winner of this match is very, very tough. This was tough for me, Michael, because it, I can see it going either way because if the title belt were to go to Bianca Belair, I can see Shayna Baszler finally getting the call-up to the main roster with uh, Duke and Shafir because they're having their little tag team match already early. They're having it in that episode of NXT, so... They could literally, all three of those girls can get swooped up and called up by Royal Rumble by the end of this pay-per-view. So it could either go either way. That's the only way I can see happening. If Bianca Belair wins the championship belt, that's it for Baszler and the Horsewomen. They're getting called up and they're going to start their Horsewomen versus Horsewomen feud up on the main roster. If not, if Shayna Baszler wins the championship here, it's tough because Bianca Belair, she's had all this momentum until now. Where does she go from here? It's it's tough to get her out of the title picture after doing all and all building all, all she's had up until this point. So in saying that, I'm picking Bianca Belair here to win the, the women's championship. Mm. I'm picking two championship titles to change hands here at uh, NXT Takeover Phoenix, and uh, Bianca Belair to become the NXT Women's Championship or NXT Women's Champion of yeah NXT, <laughs> and uh, setting up some pretty crazy and upcoming feuds that just come into mind like it's crazy to see what they're going to do with this women's division coming up then and seeing who's going to be the next competitor so um you know what i i, I can't see uh shana baser carrying the title anymore now I, I think this is the perfect time to call her up uh, a lot of people would argue and say maybe wrestlemania is the perfect time to call them up but uh, I'm going to stick with my decision in picking Bianca Belair. This is her time to win that women's championship and still stay undefeated. It's really good. Uh, but this is where you and I come head to head because I actually have Shayna Baszler winning. Listen, love Bianca Belair. She might actually be my favorite person, favorite female performer, maybe in NXT. Um, I like the fact this is going to be a great match. Could possibly, if not, Gargano and Ricochet might be match of the night because Bianca Belair, I mean, for someone who does not have a wrestling background before she got into NXT, she has improved so well. She's like one of the fastest rising stars. Uh, I don't think Shayna Baszler has ever seen a threat like this. She's gone up against people like, what, Ember Moon and, and um, oh my gosh, I'm a... Uh, Kari Zayn, yeah. who are very, <laughs> who are very fast and who are very agile. But you talk about Bianca Belair; she's strong. She mili- military press slams everyone. She's probably going to do it to Shayna Baszler. She's fast in the ring. She's very technical. She does all these flip. I've seen her do a 450 splash. She's done the D'Lo Brown low down frog splash. She's oh, yeah. one of the best all 
overall wrestlers, and it doesn't surprise me that she's undefeated. But I just feel like, honestly, if there's a time to dethrone Shayna Baszler, it's going to be at NXT TakeOver WrestleMania. I felt like that's the perfect time to do it. Uh, I just don't – and I feel like, honestly, you, you may have liked it, but I didn't think the build was that good. Uh, for really? me, I felt uh, – yeah, I didn't what, – what, they ran into each other like twice? I mean, honestly, they yeah. have physically ran into each other just one time. When you think about it, yeah. Bianca Belair and Shayna Baszler have only met face-to-face – one time other than that they were either not seen on nxt television or they did done these vintage promos mm-hmm. so i just don't feel like there was enough build and story behind this to 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 give a title change so for that sadly i feel like i mean Shayna baser defeating the streak sadly might as well give it to her but uh yeah i have Shayna baser sadly uh beating bianca belair How's she going to do it? I don't know. Let's say typical. She goes for the 450 splash. She misses. Shayna Bader locks in the uh, Kirifuda clutch, and it's over. Wow, Sorry. It's like you're right Sorry. in this match. Sorry. I, I know, right? Hashtag Mike Chow creative. But <laughs> if anything, if anything, I want them to keep Bianca Belair strong, so I hope she doesn't tap out. I hope she passes out. I would still make okay. her look very, very strong. But I ran that, yeah, sadly. Um, Nikki Cross. Yeah. Remember yeah, that? Same it was thing Nikki Cross with that happened to her. Remember she was smiling as she was passing out? Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's get to the main event. Uh, surely the main event. Maybe they might make Gargano and Ricochet the main event. It's interesting to see what they'll make the main event. If they still might make the NXT title picture the main event. But uh, Aleister Black versus Tommaso Ciampa is our main, uh, main event of our picks uh, for NXT TakeOver Phoenix. And... Uh, this is an interesting match because it's the main bulk of this feud is surrounded Ciampa and Gargano. So does it make you think that either or are going to get involved in each other's match? Like it's it's really tough. It's like it almost wants you to think that, but maybe they won't. But it's tough to get into a match with Ciampa in black. There's obviously the history there, but it's tough to get into these two when mainly Ciampa's been focusing more of his attention on Gargano, which is kind of blinded his, you know, blinded his rearview mirror in seeing Black coming up from behind him because Black's been getting the upper hand on him for the last couple of weeks. So, or even that is that how Chomp is going to lose this championship to Black because he he's been literally focusing too much on Gargano that he's losing sight of in focus of his actual championship match and Black is going to win it that way and he's going to take out his frustrations on Gargano and blame him for the reason why he lost the championship belt. Mm. So there's the thing. Uh, or he can go the other way around. Is Ciampa g- still going to be the guy who says he's the best en- sports entertainer in the world? He's still the guy to beat. He's still the ultimate champion. He's still going to basically say that Aleister Black is nothing to him. He's beat him before, and he's going to beat him again. So, um, oh, wait, has he beat him before? I'm pretty sure he's Ooh. beaten him before. Has Ciampa's pinned Aleister Black, correct? Am I not wrong? Yeah. I mean, yeah. he is the NXT champion. Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> Sorry, brain fart moment here. Reverse. Okay, anyways. um, So <laughs> he's done it before, so he can do it again, and you have all that confidence in putting Ciampa over Aleister Black. So this is another match where it can go either way. But I'm going to stick with that second one, and I'm picking Tommaso Ciampa to retain the uh, NXT uh, championship here and uh, continue this epic, almost three-year storyline with Johnny Gargano. I don't know who Ciampa is going to face at NXT WrestleMania. In my eyes, I don't think it's going to be Gargano just yet. I kind of like the idea of pushing that and leaving the final match at NXT Chicago where it all started. Uh, So... We'll see what happens with that. Maybe there's someone, maybe Velveteen Dream springboards himself there again, or Adam Cole. Uh, we'd love to see Adam Cole and, and Tommaso Ciampa go at it finally for that NXT championship. That'd be a nice match to see. So I'm going to stick with that and pick Tommaso Ciampa to retain in a really good match. These two are going to put on an epic match as well uh, against Aleister Black. Mm-hmm. So I have, along with you, Tommaso Ciampa going over. So I love Aleister Black, but honestly, this might sound a little bit mean, but now that the streak is over, I no longer need Aleister Black to win anymore. <laughs> and, hey, he he's married to Zelina Vega, so he, I don't mm. think he cares if he loses anymore. So, uh, he ain't um, losing that part. They're not the part he ain't right. losing that part. He ain't losing that part. But, uh, yeah, Tommaso Ciampa has been having such a great year. 
you might actually win super superstar of the year at the NXT awards, which yeah, by the way is going down during the yeah, pre-show. At that so. pre-show, and I'm like, okay, so most of it's going to be announced during the panel, which I'm not going to be able to hear. Got it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you don't need to hear it because the uh, panel is always cringe, so forget about it. Right. So uh, other than that, uh, I have so I announced earlier that I predicted that Johnny Gargano is going to win the North American Championship with assistance from Tommaso Ciampa. So I feel like he's going to return the favor here. Johnny Gargano is going to return in the main event. He's going to help Tommaso Ciampa beat Aleister Black. And if for everyone, everyone in live chat, you too, Kyle, if you could close your eyes and imagine this. They did not do it on today's episode of NXT. But if you could close your eyes, you, everyone in live chat and everyone listening to the podcast – if you can imagine walking up those steps, and if my prediction is true, you have Johnny Gargano raising the North American Championship, and you have uh, and you have Tommaso Ciampa raising the NXT Championship. Show goes off the air. That's the last thing you see. Both of these guys raising these two championship titles. It is mm. an image to remember to send you guys home, and with a whole bunch of questions: Is DIY getting back together? What is going on here? How will this strain uh, Gargano's relationship with uh, his mm. wife now that okay. that has happened? So, and if I were to make a crazy prediction, so bear in mind, I just said that uh, Johnny Gargano helps Tommaso Ciampa beat Aleister Black. And he is the North American champion. So I feel like sometime in between, because there is no pay-per-view for NXT in February, sometime in between, I feel like Aleister Black is going to cost Johnny Gargano the North American championship. And at NXT TakeOver WrestleMania, there's going to be, it's never been done before at NXT TakeOver WrestleMania, it's going to be a fatal four-way for the NXT championship, Tommaso Ciampa versus Aleister Black versus Johnny Gargano versus Ricochet. Should be a great match. Okay. Because it, it is so hard right now, honestly. With all of these NXT call-ups, there's not that many wrestlers around anymore who have not already faced each other, you know? I mean, NXT TakeOver WrestleMania has always been great. The whole WrestleMania seeing matches, seeing feuds you've never seen before. But it just seems like everyone's already faced each other. Aleister Black has already faced Johnny Gargano. Tommaso Ciampa has already faced... Um, has he faced Ricochet? Oh, well, Tommaso Ciampa has never faced Ricochet. They could possibly do that match. But for me, never been done before. I say Fatal 4-Way NXT Championship at NXT TakeOver WrestleMania. So you know, it's, time for, it's time for a fresh yeah. start. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a, a fresh start being needed for NXT. Hopefully not, but you know what I mean. Uh, time I do know start. what you mean. If anyone needs me to carry a coffee latte to Kenneth LeRae's locker room, you let me know. Oh, okay. Uh, not sure if she'll be uh, in the same attire as uh, an Alexa Bliss because uh, she has more class than that. Uh, all right. Sorry, not Great. sorry. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, so yeah. So we're both agreeing with Tommaso Ciampa there. Very interesting uh, prediction there, Michael, uh, for the future of the NXT Championship or Goldie as uh, – uh, apparently, Cuba Girl says in the chat that uh, he's nominated Goldie for NXT Female of the Year. Don't know how well that's going to go over. I don't know if she'll win that. So, <laughs> uh, th- she should. She win. <laughs> it, that's all. The title belt's a female. I mean, not to, I'm not trying to put labels on anything here, but that's interesting. Uh, anyways, <laughs> uh, that's our predictions, guys, for uh, NXT uh, Takeover Phoenix. Mm-hmm. 